Well, Linda Robson, this is your life before loose. So <laughs> much to talk about, isn't it? But you know what? We're going to go back in time. We're going to go back to 1958. And baby Linda, Patricia, Mary, Mary. Robson was born in hospital in North London to mum, Rita and dad, Bobby. And your mum actually came from Ireland originally, she did, didn't from she? from Dublin, yeah. And she, she was engaged and everything else, but then... Yeah, so she London was engaged and... to someone in Ireland and she, Jimmy Sullivan, I think his name was, and she came back here because her brother got polio. So my nan moved over to England with with um, Noel, my uncle Noel, and they went for treatment at Bart's Hospital. And meanwhile, while my mum was here, she was supposed to be here for a week or so, she met my dad, fell in love, and never went back to Ireland. So if that hadn't have happened, I wouldn't have been born, would Where I? Where did they meet? They met in a pub, I think, like a local pub in Islington. And, uh, and your dad was like a bit of a cheeky chappy, wasn't he? Yeah, I'd say more than cheeky chappy. <laughs> there he is now. He was a bit of a womaniser. He had a bit of a reputation with the ladies. But that. he was like, he, he was life and soul, right? Yeah, he was. He had a great sense of humour. Like, we used, me and Pauline used to go out of him on a Friday night, him and his mates and that. And uh, I just got on really, really well with my dad. When, like, I could talk to him about anything. When I got pregnant with Lauren, like, my mum was, like, traumatised because I wasn't married, Catholic and all of that. When I told my dad, he went, do you want it? Do you love him? So I said, yeah. So he went, we'll have the baby then. Mm -hmm. he, he was the one that sort of spoke sense. My mum was, like, worried about the family and everything because my sister Tina had got pregnant at 16, had a baby at 17. So I suppose she worried about that. But she knew I was pregnant before I sort of even told her. So we were away for a weekend and she went to me, if I didn't know you better, I'd say you were pregnant. And then I just went... <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God, oh, my... Like, the shame on the so family. So they were very different, your mum and dad, They were really different, yeah. yeah. My mum didn't have any sense of humour, really. She didn't like comedies or music or anything, whereas my dad loved... Like, he loved to laugh, and he was, like, the life and soul of a party, and... Like, and um, so you have happy childhood now. Yeah, I did really have a really, stage. really happy childhood, yeah. Yeah. It was hard sometimes, because we were a working-class family. My dad was a builder, decorator. My mum was a home help, so she used to go and, like, help the elderly, go do their shopping for them or, like, clean up for them, or sometimes do things that she wasn't supposed to help. If they had an accident, she'd, like, clean them up or whatever she wasn't supposed to, but she did. Um, yeah, she was a really, really good mum. She really, really was. Mm -hmm. She was one of a kind. I'll reap the tea. <laughs> well, as you, you've described your dad, you know, as the sort of the cheeky chappy, but you've always sort of said he was a great dad, but not a, not a great husband. No, not really. Um, he just had an eye for the ladies, really. He was one of those that had come home from work and go straight to the pub and have a drink with his mates. And sometimes on a Sunday, my mum would make a really nice roast dinner and then we'd take it over to the pub to him because he never even came back for the roast dinner and that. And then we found out he'd been living a different, like a double life um, at one time. So he, he was working of a day as a builder and decorator, roofer, and then of a night he'd say, I'm, I'm a night watchman, I'm going to work. And then one day this woman turned up on the doorstep and said, oh, you think your dad's been working nights? He's been living with me for two years. So my mum was obviously traumatised by that because she really loved him. Do you think him. she knew? Uh, I think if she knew, she didn't want to know, really, because she loved him so much, I think. And also, being Catholic and Irish, she wanted to stay married to the same person yeah. for the rest of her life. But um, they're both together now in the cemetery, next to each other. Um, my mum's <laughs> here and my dad's just here. He's married to a... Um, he's, he's living next door to a lady called Doris Pratt. And we always said, he'd say, what'd you put me next door to that Pratt for? <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to say that on daytime telly? Yeah. Yeah, OK. <laughs> no, but, but just keep remembering you are on telly and kids no, will go yeah. anywhere else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we had, a, we had a happy childhood with them. We yeah. really did. But that, but that this, this woman turning up, obviously, just completely devastated yeah. your mum, who was very much in love with your dad. And it made her then sort of almost think, right, that's it, I have to move on with my life, I have to... And, and she did do that, yeah. she moved all of you then. We did, like, a moonlight flip one night, so um, my mum um, loved bingo. Bingo was, like, her life. She'd go in the afternoons and the evenings sometimes. And um, she met someone and then she moved us out to um, Leytonstone um, with this other person that she met. And we were there for probably about six months and I left the primary school, that's my sister there, mm -hmm. Debbie in the middle and Tina on the other side. Um, so we left the primary school that I was at at the time, Rotherfield, and because we didn't tell them we was leaving, when we went back, we then ended up going to Ecclesbourne School, which is where Anna Sher was, um, and that's how I became an actress.